Good evening, everybody. And welcome to the Bishop McDevitt graduation for the class of 2023. Uh, we're going to begin exactly. Thank you. Uh, we're going to begin as we do all things with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the opportunity today to gather here to celebrate the class of 2023 as they take their next step on their journey through life. However, we also want to give thanks to you for all the good gifts that you have given us. Thank you for Bishop McDevitt High School, which has helped this class to grow academically and spiritually. Thank you for the teachers, faculty, and staff who have worked so hard to prepare them for all of life's joys and difficulties. Thank you for their family and friends who have been beside them every step of the way. Thank you for the countless memories that you have given them during their years here at Bishop McDevitt. But most importantly, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave us his life so that we may have life and have it abundantly. Father, we ask that you give all of us the grace to live our lives totally for you and to lead our brothers and sisters to do the same. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good evening. Tonight you will see our graduates are wearing pink ropes with their graduation gowns. These ropes are to commemorate Jeffrey Souter, who was lost to our Bishop McDevitt family in the class of 2023 due to an unfortunate automobile accident earlier this year. Pink was Jeff's favorite color. Jeff had an impact on every life he touched and his class of 2023 wants to make sure that he is with them as they graduate from Bishop McDevitt High School. So tonight, we would like to take a moment to ensure that ha that happens. Bishop McDevitt and the class of 2023 will be issuing a diploma that signifies Jeff's commencement from a student to an alumnus of Bishop McDevitt High School. Accepting the diploma on behalf of Jeff is his younger sister, Emma Suter. Emma, on behalf of the class of 2023 in Bishop McDevitt High School, please accept this diploma for your brother Jeff. We'd like Father Weaver to just come up and say um, a prayer on behalf of Jeff. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we humbly entrust our brother Jeff. In this life, you embraced him with tender love. 
Deliver him now from every evil and bid him eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome him into paradise where there will be no more sorrow, no more weeping, no more pain, but fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand as we um, sing the national anthem. stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. On the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and a rock red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that
Last year, we started a tradition of honoring and recognizing alumni and members of our McDevitt community for outstanding service. At this time, I ask Ms. Aaron Davis, Director of Enrollment, to come and present this year's uh, medal winner. Good evening, Bishop Gaynor, Superintendent Breen, Mr. Puglis, Board of Directors, Dr. Gardner, Principal Harper, the administration, Father Weaver, faculty, staff, families, and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. Welcome to this beautiful and joyous occasion. It is with great honor that I, Aaron Davis, class of 2008 and Director of Enrollment, stand before you to present the 2023 Bishop Philip R. McDevitt Award, the most prestigious award given to an individual who has demonstrated an exceptional commitment to serving our school, embodying our core values, and the mission of our beloved institution. When Bishop McDevitt started Harrisburg Catholic High School in 1918, his goal was to provide the highest quality of education to the students of the greater Harrisburg area. He built Harrisburg Catholic downtown on North Street, for those that don't know, that building is now connected to the former St. Patrick's Cathedral School and proudly serves as home to Harrisburg Catholic Elementary School. He then moved Harrisburg Catholic to 2200 Market Street, which was home of the Crusaders for 83 years until we moved here at One Crusader Way in 2013, which as an alumni, I look around tonight in awe that we are celebrating our 10th graduating ceremony here under the lights of Rocco Hortensio Stadium. We are blessed with the most generous and servant-driven alumni at Bishop McDevitt. We have individuals that dedicate themselves to the betterment of our alumni community and the student body. They lead special events and reunions. They teach, coach, and support the arts and athletics. Throughout the span of the history of Bishop McDevitt High School, there are few people that can say they have served our school for five decades, having experienced both sets of towers, a grass field and a turf field, and witnessing Bishop McDevitt's mission in action. Through this span of time, there has been one individual serving as support in whatever capacity he was asked to uphold that mission. If you weren't looking for him, you may have missed that he was there always silently standing in the corner of Tracy Hall or St. Sebastian Hall or on the sideline at football and soccer games. As a volunteer since his 70s, he's played a crucial role in supporting the athletic department, ensuring its smooth operations and success. As a fan of all Crusader athletics, this individual has primarily supported the girls and boys basketball programs and football program, organizing equipment, fanware and facilities, providing assistance during practices, games, and event management. His contributions have been invaluable. He even had his young children by his side handing out programs and cleaning the bleachers on Saturday home games in the 90s, who they then later became graduates themselves. Teresa in 2004, Michael in 2006, Rosalie in 2008, and Mary Elise in 2010. As an alumnus so dedicated and devoted to the blue and gold, he served on the board of directors for over two decades, which included campaigning for a new facility here in Lower Paxton Township. Of those 20 plus years, he most recently completed a presidential term through internal leadership changes and a global pandemic, while still being a present husband, father, and grandfather, and vice president of equipment services at New Enterprise Stone and Lime Company. Proud, quiet, supportive, a truly selfless leader. Tonight's recipient has always put the betterment of our school, our students, you graduates, first. Everything that happened through your four years in high school, Mr. Michael J. Modica, class of 1970, always put you and your education first. As a local firefighter for over 40 years, his public service background has instilled in him a strong sense of duty and a desire to give back to his community. This award is a testament to the person he is. 
Mr. Modica, as I lovingly refer to him as, is the epitome of what it means to be a crusader. A crusader is a mission-driven individual who aims to make the world a better place. To be a crusader requires unwavering determination, perseverance, and a strong moral and ethical compass. Crusaders are driven by a pursuit of a greater good and actively work towards their object objectives, often rallying others to join their cause. Synonyms for a crusader include a campaigner, a progressive, a champion. And that who is who Mr. Modica inherently is, a champion for you, for your education, and for your future success, and the 50 classes that have come before you. Year after year, he has shown up with the same enthusiasm, determination, and love for the work he does, and McDevitt. Traits like discipline, teamwork, and a strong work ethic are evident in his contributions. Graduating seniors, as you embark on a new chapter in your lives, I wanna take a moment to encourage you to be engaged, involved, and proud to represent your alma mater. While dedicating 50 years of service to our school community, like Mr. Modica, is an extraordinary accomplishment, it is not expected or necessary for everyone. We all have different commitments and opportunities in our lives. The key is to contribute whatever way and whatever extent you can. Do the little things. My greatest mentor has preached to me, do the little things so that the big things take care of themselves. And through the work of Mr. Modica, we can assure that the littlest acts of service can create a ripple effect that benefits future generations. To Mr. Modica, on behalf of our alumni community, our administration, faculty, staff, and student body, thank you for fulfilling the mission of Bishop McDevitt by cultivating a culture of service and inclusivity. Since the 70s, you have embodied the faith, family, excellence, and tradition of Bishop McDevitt High School. May your actions continue to inspire and ignite a passion for service within each one of us. Congratulations to this year's recipient of the Bishop Philip R. McDevitt Award for Outstanding Service, Michael J. Modica, class of 1970. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for this award. It means more than you could imagine. Anybody who knows me knows I don't like to talk a whole lot, but sometimes I get spun up. And I know you're going to be here long enough tonight. So I just have something real short to the graduates. Every day, say to yourself, I'm going to make a difference. Every single day. God bless. Good evening, Bishop Gaynor, Mr. Daniel Breen, Superintendent, Secretary of Education for the Diocese of Harrisburg, Board of Directors, Father Weaver, fellow administrators, faculty, staff, alumni, family, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. I am Dr. David Gardner, President of Bishop McDevitt High School, and it is a privilege to welcome you to the Bishop McDevitt High School Class of 2023 commencement. I was asked recently in a meeting what can you say about the class of 2023? I quickly smiled and said without hesitation, faith-filled leaders. 
The class of 2023 has embodied all the pillars of faith, family, excellence, and tradition. And they have shown remarkable resilience, perseverance, and fortitude in and out of the classroom that encompassed academics, athletics, fine and performing arts, community service, and most importantly, their faith. Bishop McDevitt provided the foundation, the structure, and the path for all of you seated here today to help you achieve your success. Although these pathways were self-guided journeys, you still did them together with your fellow classmates. You entered McDevitt as individuals, but you are leaving as one MCD family. Graduation is a celebration of hard work. The excitement that all of you are feeling this evening, I assure you, is equally felt with all those seated around you. Graduation is not a goodbye, but another step forward. Jeremiah 29 11 states, I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. Even when you don't know how your story is going to go, God does, and that it should give you a peace and strength to move forward. No matter where your journey leads, know that God is with you and will provide the strength and guidance for your next chapter. Graduates, you always have a home here at Bishop McDevitt High School. Stay classy crusaders. Congratulations to the Bishop McDevitt class of 2023. I now ask Serena Keller to present the salutatory address. Thank you, and God bless. Good evening, Bishop Gaynor, Father Josh, President Gardner, Principal Harper, Mr. Puglis, members of the Board of Directors, administrators, faculty, staff, parents, families, guests, and Class of 2023. On behalf of the Class of 2023, I would like to take this opportunity to extend our gratitude to all of those who have made it possible for us to be here today. First and foremost, to God for uniting us in Christ as one crusader family. Second, to our parents for the countless sacrifices you have made for us, for raising us, for imparting your wisdom and virtue upon us, and for supporting us in all we do. To our teachers for teaching us so much more than mere knowledge, for being positive role models, for listening to our rants, and for sticking up to us, for us. And for everyone else who has given us a word of encouragement or played a role in our successes, whether big or small, your kindness is, kindness is greatly appreciated. Thank you all for everything you do. My dear fellow classmates, as we branch out, spread our wings, and make new discoveries about ourselves and about the world, it is easy to fall into the trap of despair. But take heart. For every cause of dismay around us, there is greater cause for hope. The tragedies of life are temporary. They cannot last because truth exists. Not only does it exist, but it prevails and it has prevailed throughout history. The ultimate example of this, of course, can be found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is truth itself. Additionally, the survival of the church founded by Christ, the Catholic Church, despite centuries of persecution, the rise of thousands of heresies in different Christian sects, and the negative light shed upon it by the actions of people claiming to represent the church while not upholding its virtues. More recent examples include the end of slavery and segregation in the United States and the defeat of the Nazis in World War II. These serve as evidence of the inevitability of truth, as well as the existence of forces that resist and attempt to undermine truth in our world. It is true that we will all face difficulties in our lives, Perhaps the greatest difficulty we will face is the temptation to give up our search for truth and to live a whimsical and self-serving life. We must avoid this by keeping high standards in everything we do. After attending a Catholic high school, we should all be well prepared to uphold or raise standards. Frederick Douglass tells us that if nothing is expected of a people, 
that people will find it difficult to contradict that expectation. As human beings with inherent dignity, we must expect greatness of ourselves and of those around us. By accepting mediocrity, we deprive ourselves of the use of our full human capacities and potential, which will undoubtedly lead to regret. In order to retain our dignity as human beings, we must act as human beings. We must master ourselves and not trudge, but march confidently down the path of excellence. If instead we act on our impulses and search for comfort, we will find ourselves with many regrets later in life. C.S. Lewis says, if you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end. If you look for comfort, you will not get either comfort or truth, only soft soap and wishful thinking to begin, and in the end, despair. It would be wise for us then to set goals and to live to achieve them. As Mrs. Lee would say, we must never unlock by striving to be better than we were yesterday. After all, the fight is never done being fought, the race never entirely finished, the faith never without the necessity of being kept and defended at all costs. What right do we have to unlock, to seek comfort, or to act as though nothing is expected of us? To whom much is given, much is rightly expected, and our Catholic faith and education have given us the tools we need to meet and perhaps exceed that expectation. We need not become perfect, for only God is perfect. So many times in striving for perfection, we allow the perfect to become the enemy of the good. Thus, rather than striving for this impossible obje objective, we must strive for progress. As many of us continue our education in college, it will be increasingly difficult to remain true to our goals, values, and our pursuit of truth as we are faced with many new freedoms and new pressures from our peers. Those of us who choose to set ourselves apart will likely be unpopular and face many trials, but it is through humiliation and trials that we grow. The book of Sirach, chapter two, verse five, tells us that in fire gold is tested and the chosen in the crucible of humiliation. To succumb to this, these worldly pressures is to enter the cult of instant gratification, which is the path of laziness. To triumph over these pressures is to free ourselves from the clutches of a self-serving and un ultimately unfulfilling life. Thus, we must not be afraid of suffering, but rather embrace it and derive our strength from the joy we will achieve on the other side of it. St. Basil the Great observed that many a man curses the rain that falls upon his head and knows not that it brings abundance to drive away the hunger. Let us not then curse the trials that are the vehicles for our own fulfillment. My friends, do not forget your dignity and the dignity of those around you. Do not tolerate laziness. It deprives us of fulfillment and dignity, and it is the harbinger of a selfish society, one that burns all bridges of cooperation and progress in order to secure a false and fleeting comfort. We must honor those who have toiled in the past to secure for us the privileges we have by working in the same way to better the world for future generations. How are we to do this if we yield to the worldly desire for comfort by settling for less than greatness? Do not let the world change you, but rather go out and change the world. This is the difference between complacency and proactivity. I leave you with the words of Pope St. John the 23rd, Consult not your fears, but your hopes and dreams. Think not about your frustrations, but about your unfulfilled potential. Concern yourself not with what you tried and failed in, but with what is still possible for you to do. Finally, seek the truth in all that you do, so that at the end of your lives, you, like St. Paul, may say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Thank you all. Congratulations, class of 2023. May God bless you abundantly. Each year we go on a search for a distinguished alumni to present to our graduating Bishop McDevitt High School students. 
The past two years, our graduating seniors have been blessed by, to be addressed by two very distinguished alumni, and this year, Bishop McDevitt will demonstrate once again how special our alumni are. This year's distinguished alumni is an exemplary representative of what a Bishop McDevitt education and diploma signifies. Our distinguished alumni for this evening was born and raised in Stilton, Pennsylvania. He's the oldest of four children. He is a graduate from Bishop McDevitt class of 1965. He started his college education at the University of Pittsburgh, which was interrupted by his deployment and service to our country in the U.S. Army. He completed his education at Mount St. Mary's University. He began his career in financial industry in 1972 and retired after a 50-year career. In 1999, he started his last company, Premier Wealth Management, with only himself and an administrative assistant. Over the span of 23 years, he grew this small company to one that would include 70 offices in 19 states with a clientele in all 50 states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. This small company that began in 1999 would grow to manage or advertise for billions of dollars in assets. Over the last 23 years of his career, he was affiliated with Cambridge Investment Research, which is widely considered as the number one independent broker dealer in the United States. Additionally, the, 19, the last 19 years of his career, Premier Wealth Management finished in the top 10 nationally at Cambridge out of nearly 400 similar organizations. One of those years, Cambridge ranked Premier Wealth Management as number one nationally out of those 400 organizations. In 2012, the Spirit of Cambridge Award was instituted. This award is Cambridge's version of their Hall of Fame. It is given to individuals who have been affiliated with Cambridge for a minimum of 10 years and who best embody the core Cambridge principles of integrity, flexibility, kindness, and commitment, and have done much to build the company. Each year, three people are recognized out of nearly 3,500 Cambridge associates. Our distinguished Bishop McDevitt alum was one of the three inducted into the inaugural class of 2012. Although he is retired today, he serves on a number of boards, which include President of the Bishop McDevitt Board of Directors, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Premier Wealth Management, Chairman of the Hershey Theater Advisory Board, Member of the Board of Directors of the Harrisburg Chapter of Legatus, Founder and Executive Director of the LFA Foundation, which helps families access therapies and services that can allow their diagnosed loved ones to reach their highest potential in life. The LFA Foundation was incorporated in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as a 501c3 nonprofit organization in 2018. In the first six years of their existence, they have raised over $330,000, even despite the interruption of COVID. In 2020, again, born and raised from humble beginnings in, in Stilton, Pennsylvania, our distinguished alumni received the ICON Award. The ICON Award is presented annually to business leaders in South Central Pennsylvania who are over the age of 60, have a long-standing commitment to the mid-state business community, and have significant professional accomplishments through innovation and leadership. Honorees of the ICON Award must also be champions of their industries and demonstrate a sustained commitment to community service. In receiving that award, he joined two other Bishop McDevitt alums, Mr. Rocco Ortenjo and, and Mr. Bob Rubick, as well as industry leaders such as Ann Byler of Auntie Ann's Pretzels, Greg Sutliff, Dale High, Don Popson, and Rick Holler. Currently, he continues to reside in the Harrisburg area with his saint of a wife, Linda. He has two children and four grandchildren. You're welcome, Linda. It is with great honor that I once again present to our graduates another great exemplar of Bishop McDevitt alum. Please welcome the class of 2023 distinguished alumni speaker from the class of 1965, Mr. Robert Puglis. Dr. Gardner, Mr. Harper, Mr. Green, distinguished guests on the stage, my fellow board members, faculty and staff, if you had access to a television, you were awake and you sat and watched in awe and wonder as two men first walked on the moon. The decade of the 60s not only shaped my life, but the lives of many in my generation. For almost every generation, there was a seminal moment that alters the course of their lives and has the potential to set them on a new path. For my parents' generation, it was the period 1930 to 1945.
They grew up in the Great Depression and they fought World War II. And for the rest of their lives, I observed that almost every decision they made was impacted by those two seminal events in their lives. At some point in the future, you may experience such a seminal moment. When that time comes for your generation, will you be prepared? Will you be ready? Will you be able to meet the challenge? Only time will tell. Scientists tell us that our universe is over 12 billion years old. It's something that really can't be proved or disproved, like so many other scientific theories bandied about today. But regardless of the age of the universe, the time you get to spend here is extremely short. No matter how short, <coughs> excuse me, but no matter how short the time you have, it doesn't have to be inconsequential. You all had a starting point you were born. You will have an ending point you will pass away. And in between, you're going to travel the highway of life. And it's not a destination, it's a journey. And what you do is you journey along life's ha highway. What you make of yourself, how you treat other people, and the relationship you have with Almighty God will go a long way toward defining the nature of your existence in this world and where, for better or for worse, you will get to spend all of eternity in the next world. So make your time count. In the opening pages of her book, The Time of Our Lives, the author, Peggy Noonan, tells about being in Rome in April of 2014 for the canonization of Pope St. John the 23rd. And she's standing in St. Peter's Square with hundreds of thousands, maybe a million other souls, who have come from all over to witness the elevation of that holy man to the ranks of sainthood. And she holds in her hand a program, and at the bottom of one of the pages, she sees a quote attributed to Pope St. John the 23rd, and this is what she reads. Do not travel through time without leaving worthy evidence of your passing. I want to talk to you tonight about living a meaningful life, having a positive impact upon everyone with whom you come in contact, having a real and personal relationship with Almighty God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and when your time is through, leaving worthy evidence of your passing. I was born in the first years after World War II, one of the earliest of the baby boomers. I didn't have much in the way of material things growing up, but we were rich in the things that money can't buy. As the saying goes, the, th the things that, that, that matter most. My father taught me the value of being motivated, working hard, having goals, knowing the difference between right and wrong. And when you see injustice, be willing to stand up for what is right, even if it means standing up against a friend. My mother taught was the rock and, and anchor of our family. I received two everlasting gifts from her. First and foremost, deep abiding faith in Almighty God and the power of prayer, and the second is a lifelong love affair with books. As a little boy, my mother taught me how to read, and she would take me by the hand and walk me up Second Street and Stilton to the library. I could read before I went to first grade, and I'd become a voracious reader. This year, I'm on pace to read 52 books in 52 weeks. It's a, something on my bucket list that I've always wanted to do. There are many other individuals who have influenced my life. Too many to name here, but one I would like to cite is Tom Monahan as an example of a point I want to make. Tom's father passed away on Christmas Eve when he was only four years old, leaving behind Tom and a two-year-old son. His mother had, was bipolar, but it was, it's doubtful in 1941 if anyone knew what that was. And for certain, they did not have the treatments and the medications we have today. She couldn't handle the boys. She put them in foster care. They bounced around in foster care. And when Tom was a teen, she put him in a juvenile detention center. Can you imagine growing up like that? Tom, when Tom graduated from high school, he enrolled in the, he, excuse me, he enlisted in the Navy. And when he got out of the Navy, he enrolled in the University of Michigan. He lasted all of 12 weeks. He opened up two pizza shops in Ar Ann Arbor, Michigan. They became the foundation of a pizza empire. He's known as the pizza, uh, pizza Tiger. He is the founder and was the CEO of Domino's Pizza. Later on, he bought the Detroit Tigers. Can you imagine building Domino's into a, 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 an empire today that numbers 20,000 stores worldwide and owning the Detroit Tigers? Not bad for a guy that grew up in foster care and only lasted 12 weeks at the University of Michigan. In the early 1990s, he sold both of those enterprises for a king's ransom, 
a for, a, an amount that we find astronomical even by today's measures. He turned 80, excuse me, he turned 86 in March, but his mission in life is to die broke. I would say he really needs to get busy because he has a lot, to do, a lot of work to do. He wasn't born into wealth, he wasn't born into privilege, he comes from humble beginnings. Yet he has a deep faith in Almighty God, one of the most devout Catholics you will ever meet. But he's giving back in a positive way to society. He's leaving worthy evidence of his passing. We live in a world where people make excuses for their lack of accomplishments. They blame their family situation, their environment, their perceived lack of opportunity. No shortage of excuses. You can be anything you want to be. If you work hard, treat everyone with dignity, kindness, and respect, have a real and personal relationship with Almighty God, there is nothing you can't do. Instead of making excuses why you can't achieve, search for reasons why you can. It does not matter where you start. What's most important is where you finish, and I stand here tonight as an example of that. <clears throat> the starting point for a meaningful life was clearly defined years ago by Charlie Jones. He was a nationally renowned motivational speaker based right here in central Pennsylvania and died about 15 years ago. I had the privilege of hearing him speak in the 1980s, and I read his book. He clearly defines one of those starting points when he says, five years from now, you will be the same person you are today, except for the people you associate with and the books you read. The books you read. Thank you, Mom. But more important than the books you read are the people you associate with. There's no getting around that. In fact, the associations you form in life are one of the two most important factors in determining whether you will have a meaningful or a meaningless life. If you associate with derelicts and never do wells, people addicted to drugs, alcohol, gambling, people engaged in all sorts of illicit, immoral, and illegal activities, that will be you. Gravitate towards the polar opposite. Look for people who have goals, who are motivated, who are grounded, who know the difference between right and wrong, people with a strong moral compass. Like my father told me years ago, for better or for worse, you will become who you associate with. The single most powerful force you will ever encounter as you travel along life's highway, the thing that exerts the most pressure is peer pressure. When you leave here, you'll be going in different directions, following different career paths. Some of you are going directly into the workforce. Perhaps you don't want to go to college. That's fine. There have been numerous articles written and commentaries made in the last year or two that college is not for everyone. And there's no correlation sometimes between education and achievement. Abraham Lincoln is widely regarded by most historians as our greatest president, yet Lincoln was the second least educated president in history. Only Andrew Jackson had less education than Lincoln, and that's because he had no formal education at all. Whenever I hear someone lament that he didn't go to college, I ask, what do Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Michael Dell, and Tom Monahan, and scores of others have in common? They're all college dropouts who became billionaires. How much smarter and how much richer would they have been had they stayed in school? Some of you may be going to trade school. You, we can certainly use some skilled craftspeople who show up when they're supposed to, do the work as promised, and do it right the first time. If you're going to the military, please raise your hand. I want to recognize you. If you're going into the military, whether you're in, stand up. I'm proud of you. Stand up. I want to, I want to commend you for your decision and thank you for your service and the sacrifice you're about to make. It's because of young men and women just like you all across our great country that the rest of us are free to go about our lives because you're willing to stand at post and safeguard the liberties under which we enjoy. The principles I learned in the military have served me well both in my personal life and more importantly in my business life. Andrew Christie, Jacob Guilfoyle, and Marilee Rawls are going to West Point. Congratulations. That's no small achievement. For three members of a class this small, from a school the size of McDevitt, to be going to the United States Military Academy in the same year is fantastic. I know that Andrew and Jacob are outstanding wrestlers, but that alone did not get you admitted to West Point. 
the three of you are outstanding students because there are no fluff courses or fluff degrees at one of our service academies. You're going to be trained to be leaders and you will hold in your hand the lives of the men and women who serve under your command. That is a daunting responsibility. To those of you who are enlisting, I would tell you to take something that truly interests you, but something that translates into a decent job when you finish your military service. Regardless of whether you're going to be an officer or an enlisted man and woman, when you come out of the service, none of you will ever have to worry about finding a job. Businesses love to hire people with military experience. I imagine that everyone else is going to college. Congratulations. But I will give you the same advice that I just gave your classmates going into the military. Make good use of your time. Take something that interests you, something that is marketable, and translates into a good job. Nearly 40% of the people who start college never finish. And 52% of the people with a degree do not work in the field for which they were educated. All too often, young people have the idea that you must go to a prestigious school in order to get ahead. It's great if you can get into a prestigious school, but that's not what's necessary. Nothing could be further from the truth. You can get a good education no matter where you go. It's up to you. Just apply yourself and work hard. And whether you're going to a school based on your academics or you're going to a school based on your athletics, don't squander the opportunity that's been given to you. Take advantage of that opportunity. You can use that education as one of the fundamental building blocks upon which to build a meaningful life. And for all of you, regardless of whatever your career path might be, there's an old saying that if you enjoy what you're doing, you will never work a day in your life. Even more important is to maintain a proper perspective. Strive to have a balance between your work and personal life. There is nothing worse than getting up every day and going to a job that you don't like. Regardless of your salary or, or title, sooner or later it frustrates you. As Simon Sinek likes to say, working hard for something we don't care about is stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. Believe me, you want passion in your life, not stress. Regardless of the career path you choose, each and every one of you has value. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you are not important. You were all put here by Almighty God, and there's a a reason and a purpose for your existence. There is honor and dignity in doing work. As Audrey Hepburn once remarked, every person has value, and there is value in your life's work, no matter what it is. It takes a diversity of doings from everyone to create a meaningful society. And do your job well is noble. Martin Luther King is famous for his I Have a Dream speech that he gave in Washington in August of 1963. But in 1967, he was asked to come to Philadelphia to address the workers who were on strike in a municipal worker strike. And this is what he told those people that day in a speech that came to be known as the street sweeper speech. If it falls to your lot to be a street sweeper, then sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Lee and Tom Price sang before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts in heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. Your generation as a group, however, is, is a cause for the greatest amount of, peer, of concern because you're going to experience tremendous peer pressure. All your life you had someone backstopping you, your parents, your grandparents, your guardians, someone who loved you always made sure that when you came to a fork in the road, you took the right direction. Now you're going to be on your own. You're going to have to make those decisions for yourself. This is where you're going to demonstrate what you learned in your faith-based education and how strong a value system you possess. This is where your belief in Almighty God becomes important, but this is where there's the greatest concern. Dan Cellini's survey of over 400,000 practicing Catholics from coast to coast tells us that by the time young people reach 22, 85% of them have walked away from their faith. Dr. Ray Gurendi, a family psychologist, corroborates that. He says that even if a child goes to the most Catholic of Catholic universities, there's only a 50-50 chance they're still going to practice their faith. This past March, I attended the diocesan men's conference. The keynote speaker said, 
that for every new Catholic coming in the front door, there's one or two going out the back door. And all of us, I'm sure, know someone who either has walked away from their faith for whatever reason or stopped going to church. You may think it's corny that I'm talking a little bit about God, but I'll tell you what's not corny. I'll tell you what's crazy. That's people who think they can go through life without a real and personal relationship with Almighty God. I've been to a lot of commencements in my years at different levels, everything from kindergarten to college, and it never ceases to amaze me how infrequently anyone mentions God. If you can't talk about God at a McDevitt commencement, I'm not sure where you can. In my own personal life, God has played a significant role. Mr. Harper told you of the great success I attained in business, but what he didn't tell you is I had two failed business partnerships before I ever hit it big. My wife and children are all here tonight. They can tell you that we once lived in a house so small it was actually a cottage, and it was a small cottage at that. And I want, my wife can attest that there was a time when we didn't have two nickels to rub together. We were living paycheck to paycheck, not even sure if we could pay our bills. But through it all, we had each other, and we had our belief in God. No matter how full the glass is, there are always people who see it as half empty. They're the people who always see the gray cloud wrapped around the silver lining. Avoid those kind of pessimistic people. I've always been the opposite. I'm an eternal optimist. I'm a half glass full kind of person. <clears throat> no matter how dark things may have been, no matter how bleak the future may have looked, I always had unbridled optimism that today was better than yesterday and tomorrow would be better than today. That kind of optimism comes from hope, and that hope comes from, from faith. Faith in an almighty God who made me in his image, who loves me, and who wants, wants what's best for me. When my father passed away, I received a plaque that he had in his house. My mother gave it to me. It simply said, faith is not believing that God can. It is knowing that he will. That kind of faith can move mountains and can serve you well all your life. One of the oldest and most recognizable polling organization in the United States is the Gallup Poll. In the period 1944 to 1960, they found that over 98% of the people living in the United States believed in God. Fast forward to today. In 2013, it had dropped to 87. By 2020, it was down to 81. Today, it's 80. We've gone from virtually everyone believing in God to where one out of five do not. In the opening line of Psalm 14, the psalmist writes, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Look around you. Where did all this built beaut uh, beauty come from? There is a certain order to the entire universe. Our earth turns on a perfect axis. If it was tilted a few degrees one way or the other, it would be too hot or too cold to sustain life. That's not by accident. That's not from some big bang theory. That's divine providence. The relationship we have with Almighty God and the associations we make are the two most important factors in determining whether you will have a meaningful or a meaningless life. We are all created equal in the eyes of God, and when we stand in judgment before him, we're going to be held to the same moral standards. But on a different level, you will be judged individually on the talents you receive. Some of you have beautiful voices. When you sing, you sound like a lovely songbird. Some of you are members of the crowd that performed at the Heinz Chapel Chamber Choir Festival, one of only three high schools invited to that prestigious event. Some of you are gifted artistically. You can paint and sketch and draw, and perhaps you take fantastic photographs. Some of you are skilled writers. Who knows, maybe there's another James Mitchner, John Grisham, or Mary Alice Monroe seated here. Jewel Johnson, Alexis Kane, Marina Puglis, and Andrew Zeglin were all Apollo Award nominees for Outstanding Student Playwright, and Zachary Gardner received honorable mention. And Alexis Kane actually won the Apollo Award for Outstanding Student, student Playwright for her one-act play, People Watching. In addition, she won a Gold Key for Scholastic Art and Writing Award for Dramatic Script. Zach Gardner won the 2023 Erwin M. Marcus Prize for Best National History Day Senior Paper in Pennsylvania History. The award included a certificate, a monetary stipend, and publication in Pennsylvania History, a journal of Mid-Atlantic Studies. Some of you are gifted theatrically. 
You can perform on stage and sing and dance and nothing phases you. The crowd doesn't intimidate you. Alexis Kane won the Apollo Award for Outstanding Featured Player in a Musical for her white work as Mrs. Peru in The Music Man. Others among you are gifted when it comes to playing musical instruments. And some of you are gifted athletically. Certainly this class is gifted athletically with the number of team and individual championships you've won at all levels. During your years at McDevitt, some of you were part of the McDevitt boys swimming team that won the state championship several years ago and this most recent year were state runner-ups. Some of you were part of the state championship football team this past December. And Riley Rovell was one of the best, if not the very best, wrestler in our history. After finishing second at states as a sophomore, he came back to win back-to-back -back state titles. Riley, wherever you're sitting, congratulations. That's an awesome accomplishment. Gabe Arena, Riley Robell, and Tyshawn Russell were selected at the Big 33 Football Classic. And some of you may not be given any of those gifts, but instead you were given a kind and caring heart that enables you to minister to others in their time of need, especially those less, less fortunate than you. Regardless of the gifts you received, you will be held accountable for what you did with them. Scripture makes reference to this in a number of passages. Fully develop those gifts to give glory to God and to bring joy and pleasure to your fellow man. One thing I've always said to everyone is the true measure of a person is what you do with what God gave you to work with. Don't squander whatever he gave you. And if your life is in good order, then it's time to give back by paying it forward. We do that with one of the three T's, time, talent, or treasure. I've had people say, if they can't write a check, that's fine. Can you donate some time? A school like Bishop McDevitt can always use some dedicated volunteers. If you've been blessed with one of those talents I alluded to a minute ago, share it with a younger sibling or a younger cousin or a younger person in your neighborhood. You never know that, you're, that you might touch them in a way that changes their whole life. And I've had people say to me, I can't write a big check like you. I say, that's fine. Can you give $25 or $50 or $100? I am not aware that Dr. Gardner has ever turned away a gift because it was too small. As human beings, we form good habits or bad habits by what we do repetitively. When it comes to giving back and paying it forward, we're either hoarders or we're givers. One of the most powerful homilies I ever heard in my life, long before I ever had anything to give, was by a priest long, who's long since passed. He said that day that he had presided over a lot of funerals, but he had yet to preside at a funeral where the hearse ever stopped at the bank on the way to the cemetery. If I reflect on the time that my wife and I didn't have two nickels to rub together, we always found it in our heart to give something to McDevitt. Maybe it is because I always looked at McDevitt as providing me one of the building blocks and the sound foundation upon which I built a meaningful life. Or maybe it was because my wife and I met and fell in love at McDevitt. I was a senior and she was a junior when we first started the date 58 and a half years ago. We'll be married 54 years in August. Our donations started small and they built over time. And always, always remember to thank those who help you. None of us gets to where we are on our own. I mentioned my parents and Tom Monahan, but there have been many others. If it wasn't for Virgil Hartman and Chet Snyder, I would never have attained the success in business as I have. They started me in business over 50 years ago. The things I learned from those men and the business principles that they instilled in me were instrumental in building my business. They're both gone now, but I think of them more often. Chet was 62 when I first met him 51 years ago. And Father Carl Fives, I get emotional when I talk about him. If you go to Mount St. Mary's and you go up to the grotto, and you stand outside the gift shop on the, in the entrance on the lower level, you will see, look to the left, you will see the cemetery. In the first few rows are the priests, and in the very first row is far, Father Fives. At a time in my life when nothing is going as I hoped or planned, when everything seemed to be falling apart, when I needed someone, anyone, to give me a lifeline and give me a helping hand, Father Fives was there. If it wasn't for Father Fives' intervention, 
I wouldn't be standing here this evening. Start tonight by thanking those wonderful people sitting behind you, your parents, your grandparents, your guardians, whoever is responsible for being, you being here. Each and every one of them made a sacrifice and a commitment. Each and every one of them made a commitment to see that you got the best education. And, and regardless of what they paid, it's a sacrifice. If I asked them, they each have a half dozen different ways they could have spent that money, but they chose to spend it on you. And another group that deserves all of our thanks is this group of dedicated men and women seated to your right and my left, the faculty and staff of Bishop McDevitt High School. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. Each and every one of them is making a sacrifice to be here. There is no one among them that couldn't earn more money teaching and working in some other school. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I want to thank you for your service, your dedication, and your sacrifice. It may go unsaid at times, but it doesn't go unnoticed. I thank you, and we all applaud you. And whatever, whatever you do, do not allow the world to define your success. I made that mistake once, long after my father had passed, and I was building my business into a national presence. My mother asked me how my business was doing and remarked that she prayed for me every day. I told her that my business was doing great and that she should keep on praying. Not only were her prayers being heard, but they were being answered. I said, I finally made it. We're going to finish number one this day. As soon as I said it, I knew that I had made a terrible mistake. I wished I could just reach out and snatch those words back. She said, what are you talking about? You don't have to finish number one to make it. You made it a long time ago when you turned out to be a good and decent man. Your father would be proud of you. Do not fall into the trap of letting the world define your success. It doesn't matter how large your flat screen TV is, how many expensive gadgets you own, what kind of car you drive, how big your house is, or how much money you have. Those are worldly treasures, fleeting pleasures, that aren't going to do a bit of good when you're knocking on heaven's door trying to get in. Get, get in. What really counts is what's inside of you, the kind of person you are, how you treat others, and the relationship you have with Almighty God. If you want to be a success, be the best version of yourself, the best man, the best woman, the best husband, the best wife, the best father, the best mother. Not only will you have a more meaningful life in this world, but when you're knocking on heaven's door, you'll find you'll be in a lot better shape when you're trying to gain admittance to the next world. When I began this evening, I posed the thought, if I could go back 58 years, what would I tell my younger self? Exactly what I told you this evening. Knowing how my life played out, the road I had to travel to get to where I am, along with my observations of men and women who have led and are leading, leading meaningful lives, what I shared with you are the keys to, having a, uh, to living a meaningful life. But as my drill sergeant, Sergeant Shepard, told me years ago, pay attention to the details. Details matter. They matter in business. They matter in life. They matter in athletics. Don't take shortcuts. Don't cut corners. Don't look for the easy way out or the path of least resistance. You need to check all the boxes, not just the fun ones, if you want to have a meaningful life. If you have a great job and you're earning a good income and you don't share it and pay it forward, you haven't checked the box. If God gives you those wonderful gifts I alluded to early and you don't develop them, you're not checking a box. And if you don't have a real and personal relationship with Almighty God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're not checking the most important box of all. You need to check all the boxes if you want to have a meaningful life. Would I change anything if I could? It's not possible. The highway of life is not a divided highway. All the lanes go in one direction. You don't get to go back to the beginning. There are no do-overs, no second acts, no encores. You only get to travel and make that journey one time. Take your time and make it count. Don't be in a hurry. Many people will tell you to stop and, and smell the roses. I prefer Nadine Starr. In her, in her poem, If I Had to Live My Life Over, she closes with the lines, if I had to live my, my life over, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring. 
and stay that way later in the fall. I would go to more dances. I would ride more merry-go-rounds. I would pick more daisies. When you travel, the highway of life goes slowly. Take in the sights and sounds. Enjoy every minute. Stop often. Whether you're stopping to smell the roses or you're stopping to pick the daisies, stop. Savor every moment. You're making memories, memories that will last a lifetime. And when your time is through, if you have a moment to reflect, hopefully your memories are all grand of good and happy times spent with family and friends and loved ones. And maybe when you're gone, those same people will think of you in the same way. I'm going to close the way I began. My hope and prayer for each and every one of you is that you live a meaningful life, that you have a positive impact upon everyone with whom you come in contact. More importantly, that you treat everyone with dignity and kindness and respect, that you find joy and purpose and fulfillment in whatever career you choose as your life's work, that you fully develop the talents that Almighty God has given you, that you pay it forward in some fashion. Always remember to thank those people that helped you along the way. And you have a real and personal relationship with Almighty God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus walking beside you to give you comfort in those moments of sorrow and heartache and heartbreak that you're sure to experience. Jesus walking behind you to give you support when nothing is going as you planned, when your world seems to be falling apart. Jesus will give you the strength and courage to stay the course, to finish the journey, and to have a meaningful life. In the words of Harvey McKay, in the words of Harvey McKay, life is too short to have to wake up with regrets. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't. Believe everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. And if it changes your life, let it. No one ever said that life would be easy. They just promised that it would probably be worth living. God bless you as you leave this evening. Congratulations and welcome to the ranks of McDevitt alumni. You are now a crusader for life. Graduation from high school is signified by the reception of the school's diploma. The diploma of Bishop McDevitt High School is granted upon successful completion of requirements established by the Department of Education of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Department of Education of the Diocese of Harrisburg and Bishop McDevitt High School. President Gardner, Mr. Daniel Breen and I will be presenting the diplomas to our students this evening. Ms. Kristen Sampson, Assistant Principal for Academics, and Ms. Cheryl Ryder, Assistant Principal for Student Services, will read the names of the graduates. As we read the names of the graduates, we ask the audience to be respectful and hold the applause so that each family can hear their graduate's name announced. As we begin this evening, we ask for respectful silence so that each family can hear their student's name called. Zachary Kenneth Gardner. Serena Lenz Keller. Lauren Grace Fisher. Madeline Pauline Brooks.
Connor Lewis Reynolds. Thomas Wayne McInerney. Marina Patricia Pacalese. Monica Christine Fazolari. Gwyneth Michelle Parthamore. Molly Elizabeth Brixius. Casey Marie Phelan. Yodam DeWitt. Morgan Riley Stonesafer. Madison Lynn Snyder. Christopher Santino Adragna. Sean Allen. Brennan Patrick Almond. Vonte Anderson. Gabriel Emmanuel Arena. Daniel Ayers. Elizabeth Bailey. Janice Louise Baldwin. Natalie Helen Barkman. Christina Renee Berry. Ty Philip Bartlett. Jacob Daniel Beagley. Jasmine Faith Bennett. Michael Paul Butler. Tyler Vincent Blask. John Christopher Bozak. Jordan D. Bowers. Nia Jalen Bratcher. Elizabeth Levy Brenner.
Grace Ann Brilla. Zachariah Alexander Brown. Makai E. Burhanan. Rakai Burhanan. Anna Maria Burke. Elizabeth Claire Kaysen. Lucas Castellanos Larios. Tomas Castellanos Larios. Nicholas Juan Cavana. Nicholas Seprich. Dimitri Joshua Shakan. Andrew Connor Christie. Casey Gabriella Cobb. Caleb Justin Collins. Joshua Connor Collins. Olivia Faith Collins. Haley Grace Cuprice. Peyton Elizabeth Curry. Ava Danielle Daly. Faith Daniels. Mia Angela De Sylvester. Riley Nicole Eisman. Aiden Christopher Emery. Peter John Engel. Emmanuel Tesfaye Estefanos. Sihon Tesfaye Estefanos. Brooke Elizabeth Fairinger. Karina Lee Farber. Layla Marie Farzen.
Charles Henry Fadulo. Kalia Renee Ferguson. Jerome Thomas Forster III. Jonas Alphonse Formica. Joy Frondorfer. Lee Gabriel Garbanzos. Maria de Jesus Garcia. Anthony Joel Garcia Ramos. Constantinos Gianaris. Jacob Addison Gilfoyle. Mary Elizabeth Goodhart. Jakai James Gripper. Lucas David Hancock. Zachary T. Hancock. Zachary Cole Hare. John A. Haskins. Davis Palmer Henderson. Sydney Jane Hendry. Eric Girardi Hernandez Garcia. April Lorraine Hesmore. Haley Ann Himmelwright. Rashawn A. Holloman. Liana Elizabeth Horner. Lindsay Regina Husick. Owen Vaughn Hines. Juliana Lee Jablonski. Sayel Jacobo. Maya Jenkins. Jewel Johnson.
Marquise Michael Jones. Ellen Francis Jaroski. Alexis Faith Kane. Brandon Keith Neely. Delaney Maria Kalina. Adam Joseph Lake. Lauren Renee Lamp. Demir James Lewis. Brenda Lynn Lister. Janai Joseph Lopes. Sila George Lulinda. Credo Mabiala. <laughs> Gloria Mabiala. <laughs> William Thomas MacDonald. Anthony Kevin N. Mena. Jerome McCowan. Stevie Lee McDaniel. Grace McDermott. Grace Veronica McMurray. Micaela Sabrina Medina Aris. Mackenzie Krista Mittendorf. Ainsley Marie McHale. Shay McKenna Memna. Colin Hayes Minto. <laughs> Kayla Denise Mitchell. <laughs> Julian Emil Montero. Arel Alir Morales. <laughs> Joan Morales. <laughs> Peyton Claire Mosteller.
Isabella Marie Moulet. Bryce Mooser. Angela Amitrano Myers. Cecilia N. Nguyen. Lindy H. Nguyen. Nancy Nguyen. Tam Nguyen. Morgan C. Pacheco. Jalen Chanel Pettis. <laughs> Kathy Pham. Anthony Pham. Cherish Pinkney Sims. Robert Angelo John Plum. Eve Francis Pollock. Chloe Beatriz Posadas. Colby James William Perzer. William B. Rados. Marielle Janice Rawls Erizari. <laughs> Sadie Marie Redinger. Isaiah A. Reyes. Andrew S. Rivas Chavez. Riley Henry Robel. Adam Rockwell. Adriana Zoe Ruiz Rivera. Tyshawn Sincere Russell. Benjamin P. Safford, Elizabeth T. Safford, Andrea Kathleen Sampson, Katie Sanchez Martinez.
Grady Matthew Seaschultz. Lucas Abram Sellers. Spiro Nicholas Sagayas. Bilal M. Sharif. Rose Patricia Schick. Tyler Kevin Sedella. Juliana Lokelani Silber. Logan W. Simancas Ryder. Joseph Skian. India Loren Smith. Priscilla Molly Smith. Quinn Donovan Smith. Michael William Snyder. Anthony Rocco Solomeo. Ada Margaret Souders. Jackson E. Spria. Kylie Grace Stoltzfus. Ethan Straining. Craig James Sullivan. Jaleel Terry. Morgan Marie Thomas. Thomas Topos. Ariana Torres. Ravpreet Kar Upal. Italivi Amambe Valdez Alcaraz. Sophia S. Vernac. Mercia Imani Walton. Matthew David Wanning. Devin Christian Washington. Devin. 
Kristen Waters. Jacob Wenrick. Cade Coleman Werner. Kevin Alexander Williams. Reagan Carly Wilson. Cameron Zengel. Andrew Fitch Zeglin. So you're gonna you're gonna ask all the graduates to stand up, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna tell them um, to shift your tassels from the right to the left. Okay. And then you pause, and then have, they should turn um, to the audience. And you can say, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2020 graduates of Fish McDevitt High School. Okay. 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 What? Like now? Is it on? Okay. Okay. Graduates, please stand. Please shift your tassels from the right to the left. Turn and face the audience. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2023 graduates of Bishop McDevitt High School. All right, graduates, if we can have you uh, be seated again. At this time, I'd like to introduce the 2023 Bishop McDevitt Valedictorian, Mr. Zachary Gardner. Good evening, Bishop McDevitt, class of 2023 classmates, Bishop Gaynor, Mr. Breen, Mr. Puglise, Father Weaver, Board of Directors, alumni, family, friends, teachers, and faculty. 
I'd like to begin by asking, what is the point of a valedictorian speech? What is my role, and what profound statement am I supposed to share with all my fellow graduates? One of the most common mistakes made in writing a speech is using a valueless recounting of broad, shared experiences to give a lackluster attempt at connecting with the audience. My goal today is not to stand before you and say things like, we made it. <laughs> we survived high school. We survived fill-in-the-blanks class. What makes this format difficult is in the true uniqueness of each of our Bishop McDevitt experiences. Recounting ideas too broad or too specific can undermine the personal McDevitt journey many of us have had in these past four years. Each of our journeys were different, but yet together. We are indeed united as one family at Bishop McDevitt. We are also individuals striving for different goals and searching for our own purposes in life. Rather than give a list of events that occurred at Bishop McDevitt High School, it would be wiser instead to give insight as to what the future holds for each and every one of us. But this is hard too. Some students want to stay in central Pennsylvania. Some will be going elsewhere in the states, and some will be going to another state or even a different country. However, this speech today is not for one or any specific circumstance, instance, or encounter, but rather one that I hope will be applicable throughout the rest of our lives. My goal today is to provide insight which suits all of our individual endeavors and represents all of our future journeys. What I am referring to is the, report, the importance of relationships. Why are relationships so important? Relationships build the foundation of our character and our being, ultimately helping us pursue our meaning and purpose in life. Through our graduation from high school and our pursuit of a job or higher education, we are knowingly or unknowingly searching and yearning for what our purpose in life is and what we are doing here on this earth. Through this foundation, we will find passions, hobbies, activities, things which not only fill our souls, but the souls of others. This foundation is not formed by one relationship, but by many. And I'd like to quickly go over three of them with you and explain their importance and necessity in each and every one of our futures. The first relationship one must have is a relationship with oneself. In order to strengthen and grow your relationship with others, you must first develop a personal foundation molded by yourself and by others, such as your friends, your family, your teachers, your church. Through this foundation, you will be able to grow a healthy self-love, not a love which desires to be better than others, not a heart in the state of conceit, but rather a true appreciation of your existence and love of your life. In order to sharpen this foundation, you must practice discipline, humility, and decision-making. Know what is good and bad for you. Know what you do that helps or hurts others. Learn about the impact of your decisions and understand that not making a decision is still a decision. Recognize your faults, question your beliefs, and think about the impact of your actions. And through your development of a personal foundation, you must always remember this. You are the only you on this earth. Only you have your own presence, your own spirit, and your own soul. And that is what makes you special. While immortal in our souls, we are only short-lived guests on earth. So remember to love your life and everything that has been given to you, because nothing is accidental. The second relationship one must have is a relationship with others. The only way to strengthen ourselves as an individual is by strengthening others. In the second commandment, our Lord Jesus put it perfectly, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In order to form a positive relationship with someone else, you must be caring, concerned, sacrificial, earnest. You must be able to communicate and be open to what others are expressing. You must celebrate and accept all differences. Listen carefully. Give people your time. Learn to trust and develop empathy and caring 
for each and every human being, no matter who or what they might be. If through relationships we develop our foundation, and through our foundation we find our purpose in life, then recognize this. The moment we stop caring about others to only focus on ourselves is the moment where life begins to lose its meaning. We must have a genuine personal concern for others, a true care for others, not out of demand for favor down the road, but rather one which, which, uh, excuse me, but rather a true love in your heart and your soul. As Peter the Apostle wrote, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. This is one of the most powerful actions we can take in a relationship with another. By giving up yourself or making a sacrifice for another, it enriches your life, frees you from the sins of selfishness and greed, and motivates you to become more than you are today. The less our own lives are about us, the better our relationships can grow. Finally, what may be the most important relationship one can have is a relationship with God. Bishop McDevitt is a Catholic school, and so we recognize the ever-living presence of God in our day-to-day -day lives. God's love never changes, and he always desires to be the center of our spiritual and worldly journeys. Our love for ourselves and our love for others should always be an expression of the love for our God. As the Apostle John wisely put it, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The most common issue today in many people's spiritual journeys is that they use God to pray for things constantly for their personal benefit. That's not how a relationship works. In any relationship, you must have a two-way conversation, especially with God. And this can be achieved through many ways spiritual searching, prayer, worship, and through this conversation, we find meaning in life's purposes. You must always stay connected with God and never rush your day without going before him, seeking his presence and walking with him daily. God is paving your path which leads to your purpose. You need only follow in his footsteps. Relationships are not easy to grow or maintain. Oftentimes, you'll experience bitterness, judgment, condemnation, hatred, betrayal, unforgiveness, and anger. However, it is impossible to live life in this manner. Living a life without forgiveness is self-destructive and eats at our very soul. Forgiveness instead enriches, enriches our lives and motivates us to become more than what we are today. I ask you to recall the writings of Luke. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Through forgiveness, we can better experience God's love, but this can only be achieved through a true heart. Our heart is a reflection of our inward and outward feelings towards ourselves, others, and God. And the words that we speak are an indication of our heart. As Paul the Apostle wrote to the Ephesians, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. The words you speak are a reflection of your heart, and the quality of your life is dependent on the words you speak. So always watch what you say. As we leave Bishop McDevitt today, as graduates of high school, Always remember this. You are a crucial part of this world and should be grateful for the special life that you have been given. We face hardship in high school, but hardship does not end in high school. Although we will continue to face overwhelming challenges, only through building and maintaining relationships will we be able to overcome these difficulties and find our purpose in life. Believe in and stand close to your creator. Develop a strong relationship with others. Strengthen yourself by strengthening your peers. Always forgive with an open heart and your life will neither quickly nor easily lose its meaning. 
Bishop McDevitt High School helped develop each of us separately together. Our foundations are in our relationships. So as we go our separate directions, remember our commonality of being together as the class of 2023 Bishop McDevitt High School graduates. I wish the best of luck to all of my fellow classmates. Thank you very much and God bless. Bishop McDevitt tradition to recognize the accomplishments of the graduating class by conferring special awards for academic achievement, leadership, character, and citizenship, as well as for excellence in co-curricular and extracurricular activities. You may find the specific awards in your program. Students, you are asked to stand if your name is called and remain standing until all names in the category have been called. Please hold your applause until the names in each category have been called. We recognize the following students for general excellence as the top five in academic achievement for the class of 2023. Zachary K. Gardner, Serena L. Keller, Lauren G. Fisher, Madeline P. Brooks, Connor L. Reynolds. We recognize the following students for outstanding academic achievement. Zachary K. Gardner, Serena L. Keller, Alexis F. Kane, Maria De Jesus Garcia, Gloria Mabiala, Gabriel E. Arena, Tyler V. Blast, Lauren G. Fisher, Thomas W. McInerney, Christina R. Berry, Madeline P. Brooks, Ainsley M. McHale, Ellen F. Jaroski, Grace L. McDermott, Joshua C. Collins, Michael P. Butler, Ty P. Bartlett, Jackson E. Spria, Marielli Rawls Arizari, India L. Smith, Michael W. Snyder, Jacob D. Beagley, Juliana L. Silber, Liana E. Horner. You may be seated, students. We acknowledge the following students of the class of 2023 for their community recognition. Mary E. Goodhart, William T. MacDonald, Molly E. Brixius, Julian E. Montero, Grace L. McDermott, Serena L. Keller, Liana E. Horner, Zachary K. Gardner, Alexis F. Kane, Haley A. Himmelwright, Tyler V. Blask, Ellen F. Jaroski, Marina P. Puglis, John A. Haskins, Marielli J. Rawls Irisari, Andrew F. Zeglin. We recognize the following students for excellence in co curricular or extracurricular activities Zachary K. Gardner, Monica C. Fazilari, Rose P. Schick. Alexis F. Kane, Serena L. Keller, Eve F. Pollock, Ellen F. Jaroski, Davis P. Henderson, Ainsley M. McHale, and Mackenzie C. Middendorf. We recognize the following students for excellence in athletics. Lindsay R. Husick. Riley H. Robel, Connor L. Reynolds, Zachary K. Gardner, 
Liana E. Horner. And we recognize the following students for special Bishop McDevitt sponsored awards. Gabriel E. Arena, Janice L. Baldwin, Liana E. Horner, Eric G. Hernandez Garcia, Molly E. Brixius, Andrew C. Christie, Monica C. Fazilari, Yodam DeWitt, Andrew F. Zeglin, and Davis P. Henderson. At this time, we ask the following students to stand and be recognized for their decision to serve our country in the United States military. Michael Butler, U.S. Navy. Lee Garbanzos, U.S. Air Force. And Colby Porzer, U.S. Army. In addition to serving in the military, we would like to honor three students who will be attending the United States Military Academy, West Point. Jacob Gilfoyle, Andrew Christie, and Marielle Rawls Irizarry. Vincent Harper, I'm the principal. I do have a few remarks. I'm pretty sure I put this in an email, so it was about half the size of my email, so hopefully it won't take as long. Parents, guardians, and most importantly, the 2023 graduating class of Bishop McDevitt, it's always my honor to address the families and the next class of Bishop McDevitt alumni. I'm gonna do a little something different tonight. For putting up with this class for four years and the silly stuff you did, I'm gonna play a little game called Remember When. The way I play this game is to call out the name of one of the graduates and say, remember that time when you did this? Let's start alphabetically by first name with Andrew Christie. Remember when Andrew, no, just kidding, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Not even sure if Andrew was ever in trouble in the four years, um, and I know he can take a joke. But I did see a lot of parents go, Mr. Harper, please don't tell everyone in the state and what my kid did. And a lot of you graduates started slouching in your, in your seats wondering if I was actually gonna share what you actually did with all these nice people. I'll have to be honest with this class, I started writing a graduation speech to you on Sunday and finished on Tuesday night. Then last night I saw all of you walk into the back of and as I looked around the church, I realized how special this class really is to me. For the first time as the principal Bishop McDevitt, I'm graduating students that I've watched grow and mature for all four years of high school. All I could think of was what a group of determined kids they are and how much they have accomplished. So I scrapped my initial remarks and rewrote them this morning. I'm not talking about championships in athletics or all of the academic awards that this class has received. When I looked around the room, I said to myself, these kids' first three years of high school was tough, both academically and socially. Then I realized how special this group really is. Here's why. Each of you has shown so much more than athletic talent, academic intelligence, musical talent, and artistic ability. You've learned and shown something at Bishop McDevitt that will be hard for other classes to replicate. You learn to be determined determined to succeed, to excel, to rise above the challenges of what has gone on for three years of your high school experience. As I watched many of you walk in the back of the aisle last evening, I saw intelligent young men and women that were always determined to compete with one another. Not in a bad way, but to push each other to be better. Athletes who were determined to leave a legacy, musical students who sounded like angels, and artists who were determined to express themselves in ways that would leave lasting impressions. And that is even more special. Many of you through the years stopped by my office, passed through the hall to return a smile and a good morning, or had me riding your back to ask how your grades were, or sometimes just using me as a sounding board or for a different perspective. I know there were some of you who wanted to give up on yourselves. There were times when, uh, times we wondered whether you would make it. For some of you, high school was easy. For some, some of you, high school was a struggle. Despite all the odds against you, each of you was determined to succeed. And no matter which direction you took to get here, each of you is here. And that is special in its own way. After thinking about all that, I scrapped that initial speech that I've written about faith, family, excellence, and tradition, and instead chose to express those pillars in this way to you. Faith is the cornerstone of our community. Your faith in God and yourselves have separated you from the classes in ways 
that I can only um, begin to imagine. The family that you have become to each other and to Bishop McDevitt through some of the toughest times is a reminder to all of us what it means to be a Bishop McDevitt crusader, and it will be envied by those who weren't part of it. The excellence in all you have done in your academics and activities throughout your time at Bishop McDevitt is unparalleled, and the legacy you are leaving is one to be proud of. And whether you know it or not, this class has reignited a tradition of greatness at Bishop McDevitt High School through all you have accomplished that everyone in this stadium tonight will remember forever. In closing, I leave you guys with this. No matter what the world throws at you, no matter how hard it gets, keep that one thing that has separated you from the rest, determination. Stay determined. Be determined. Do for everyone you meet what you've done for me. Redefine what determination means. Thank you, class of 2023. In faith, family, excellence, and tradition, you will always be a special class to me. I told you guys I was going to keep it short. And now we'll have a, you're welcome. <laughs> and now we'll have a few remarks from our presider this evening, Mr. Daniel Breen, Superintendent of Schools for the Diocese of Harrisburg. Good evening, everyone. And just a few things for the class of 23. First of all, I'm, I'm proud of you. You've done remarkable things. I have real admiration for the, the courage and the tenacity that you've shown. Um, I'd like to take a second to recognize two, two men who have shown that same courage and tenacity in leading the school for the last four years. So, class of 23, can you say thank you to Dr. Gardner and Mr. Harper for all they've done? <laughs> so really, just a couple of, couple of quick things for you tonight. Um, you're accustomed to the Bishop McDevitt environment, right? This is the, the water you've been swimming in, so to speak, right, for the last four years. When you leave the stadium tonight, it's different. It's different out there. And you might know that it is different, but it'll be full-time different. You won't be at McDevitt any longer. And so there's always the question of, what are you gonna take away with you? And tonight, if you're hearing some of those themes repeatedly, some important themes, it's because at the most important times in life, people are going to stop and think about the most important things that they're going to try to relate them to you. That's why you hear some similarities in theme tonight. Okay? So here's three little points from me and things that I hope you will take away with you. Take away with you the sure knowledge that God our Father knows and loves you. And here's a great quote, one that I love from Pope Benedict XVI. He said, each one of us is the product of a unique thought of God. Hold tight to that. Um, secondly, understand that you have contributed to Bishop McDevitt. You have changed the school for the better by your presence here, by your efforts, by your tenacity. And you have a chance to continue to change the school for good in the future. So be loyal to McDevitt, give back to her, support her in any way you can. And that starts by keeping the bonds of friendship that you have among yourselves right now. And then finally, as you've heard uh, from Bishop Gaynor when we spend a day with you, and I'm sure you heard um, last night, our fervent hope is that you will be a person of faith, that you will take those seeds of faith with you from McDevitt as you leave the stadium tonight and that that will be a part of your life going forward. So again, I'm proud of you. Many blessings to you. Godspeed. Thank you. All right, just a couple of housekeeping things as we um, begin to close the ceremony. Uh, there is a rope there that the graduates are going to um, walk out. They're going to walk out of the stadium um, to get their diplomas um, outside under the tent out there. If you guys want pictures, you can meet your, um, your graduate, graduate outside. I shouldn't say graduate. You can meet your alum outside at this point. So at this point, I think this is one of the moments that you all have been um, waiting for. You guys want to toss, the, um, toss your hats, don't you? All right. If you guys want to stand up. 
face your uh, parents, your family, your friends. Give them a round of applause. I present to you again the class of 2023.